All right, so we went downstairs, we turned on the water, and the valves were accidentally left on, so water went everywhere. I'm glad the shower wasn't on the thing, but we got them turned on, and now we're gonna go ahead <laughs> and we've got it all under control now. So this is hot, this is cold. So as we explained earlier, most of the time we'll just be running full hot, and that'll be like this. So, it's not going to get hot because we don't have the water heater on, but we'll turn that on in a minute just to test that as well. But here, that's cold water. So they both appear to be working. All right, so we've turned on the water heater. We haven't had it on for a while. And we turned everything on so that we'd be able to get hot water. We haven't started it yet. And so we're gonna just kind of do a timer and see how long it takes to get the water up to temperature. This is without using the recirc valve. You ready? Mm -hmm. So it's at 84 right now. Like that's what the monitor okay. is saying? Yeah, that's the outside temperature. Is it? Heating up? It's saying yeah. 97. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's heating. 99. Uh oh, we got an error. It is warm though. Yeah, the water's warm. But we got an error. I don't know what that means. Now it's getting cold again. Okay. Well, let's go. What's the error? It was, I think it said error 02. Right. So it took about 23 seconds um, to reach about 100 degrees. Um, our set point was, I think, 103. So, and then it had, um, we looked up the error code, it kind of started beeping and gave us an error code, and the error code was 02, which is like a flame out, so the, the flame went out. Anyway, we tried it again, and it seemed to work, so we're going to try it one more time. Um, but now we have kind of hot water in there already. So, anyway, we're just going to see, like, okay, does the hot water work? Does it flow well? All that kind of stuff. We're just testing everything out. And t at the same time, just looking for leaks anywhere. So we've got, you know, one of us has dry hands and we're feeling all of the valves and all of the assembly just to be sure that we're not having any kind of leaks anywhere and it doesn't appear like we have leaks so far. So, so far it's all working really well. All right, so we've turned the recirc valve on. Um, that's kind of how it works, like that. So that's on. Um, so now, if I, I'll go ahead and turn this on and I'll turn this on and it, we should have hot water a lot quicker. Yeah, hot. Yeah. Pretty much hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the other option is if it's super cold outside um, and our tank just has freezing cold water in it, what we could do is crack this open. So rather than open it up all the way, We'll crack this up into that fire. Is that enough to light the thing? Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's lit. It's lit. Uh -huh. Okay. So we'll put it just so it's enough to light the heater. And so now the heater's running. And we should, we sh our pump is big enough that we should be able to do this and have full stream and hot water. Yeah, it's totally hot. So, and then we, if we Navy shower, this is still running and still circulating. And now if we want yeah, water back hot. on, it's hot immediately, right? Yep. So that's one way we could do it. So that's still... Mm -hmm. It's still heating, yeah. Yeah. So... Yep. And we're just, we're not using as much water, but we're still... And we're heating the tank, so the, the heater will have to work not as hard. Okay, our little shutoff valve for the shower head finally showed up. And so you can see it's literally just a little on off valve. You can see inside, it just literally opens and closes. And so this will help us conserve water when we're boondocking to be able to take military showers a little bit more easily so we don't have to reach down and turn the main faucet. So, I am just going to attach this in here and hopefully that should be that. I'll make sure it's tight. Sure get my hands working. So that's it. It just goes on there like that and we can just 
do that. And that, it does make this sit up a little bit higher, which is okay because we can adjust it here if we need to, but that's that. All right, so today we're gonna be addressing the top of this little shower portion here. And we had thought of several things to make this out of, but a few of you had suggested using starboard and we looked into it and it seems like a great fit. So we bought a piece. So this is starboard. It's a, like a high density plastic that's made for more or less the marine industry, but it's, you know, it's plastic. It's hundred percent waterproof. It's supposed to be highly UV resistant. Not that that matters in here, but it's supposed to be very durable. It also has a slight um, texture to it. It's not completely smooth. There's a little bit of a texture to it, um, which is nice for our application because we're going to be using it um, kind of as a place to sit or put your leg up if you're gonna shave your leg or something like that. Um, anyway, a couple of uh, issues that we had with setting this up. One is we don't know what glues um, stick to this. Not many do from what we've heard. Um, so we're defaulting on using screws. Um, the other one is we don't want water to run down here and then run behind this starboard because what we have to do is we have, this has to be able to hinge up like this for us to be able to access our recirculation valve. Now, if that becomes a real issue, we could replumb it and things like that. But for now, what we had planned on doing is being able to lift this up and turn on our recirculation valve uh, and turn it off. So anyway, what our plan is, is we're gonna cut a two inch section off the end here and then we'll seal all of this up so that if water runs down here, it just runs off of this and into the tub. Um, so we'll cut a two inch piece and seal it off. That means the rest of this is then free to hinge up and down um, like we wanted it to work. So um, we've gone ahead and cut, we've made some pocket holes into this piece of board that we're gonna use to pocket hole this from underneath. And then um, our plan is to just silicone here and then build up um, a little wall here. We don't know how we're gonna do that yet. Probably cutting off another piece of starboard and screwing it up from the bottom is what I'm thinking, but I'm not sure yet. So um, we're gonna do that. And then once that is done, we'll cut cup holes into this for some hinges that will be able to hinge this up. But we wanted to introduce this material and this is what it looks like. So this is what we'll be trying to do today. So we made this little edge piece. This is the piece that goes against the wall. And you can see how we built up this little, I'm gonna call it a dam for lack of a better word. Um, and then we filled that in with 5200 um, just to work as caulk. It will not actually stick very well to this stuff. <laughs> Nothing sticks to this apparently. So anyway, um, we mechanically fastened it as you can see on the back. So we just did it with screws and screwed them on there and that seemed to work okay. So that worked pretty well also just to seal it all up. So if water gets in here, it'll make a little thing and then just go into the tub. We also needed a 1 8 inch spacer. So we're gonna put a little rubber piece here um, that's 1 8 of an inch thick. One to kind of keep it sort of waterproof a little bit more and um, so that this, when we put this in, it will sit at the same level as the other piece because the hinge brings it up one eighth of an inch off of flat. So it'll do a better job of matching up. So anyway, this is what we have so far. Um, it's nice that we're able to remove this rear here because we now have access to back here. We've already pre-drilled some pocket holes in the bottom here and we'll go ahead and drive those up and get this thing on here.
going the other way. They go in backwards. Oh, gotcha. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay. Flash. All right. So it's done. This is it. Um, it turned out pretty well. This hinges up, as we've said before, we put a little hinge in here and it allows access to our recirculation valve for the hot water to make sure we've got hot water coming in right away. Um, this little thing did um, give us a little bit of a problem just in that it's real fiddly to, to mess with this plastic stuff. It just tries to slip all over the place and so we had to clamp it and try to hold it in place and screw it. So it, it was a little difficult to work with. It also does weird things when you do the, when we did the Forstner bit in it. Um, it like did these confetti type things that came out. <laughs> so it was a kind of a mess to clean up, but um, we're pretty happy with the way it turned out. It should be fairly durable. They seem All right, we are done in the bathroom. We have put all the finishing touches in here to actually make it like a functional bathroom. So let me kind of walk you through and show you what we did. The first thing was the shower curtain. We really weren't sure how we were gonna address a shower curtain. We had some ideas, but we wanted to wait until we really had this whole thing tiled and really saw it like as it was gonna work. Um, because of this curve, we knew we couldn't really even do one of those L-shaped rods because it would stop like right here and then this whole part would be open. So what we ended up doing was I bought an extra long shower curtain and this is actually one of those, kind of like a hotel shower curtain. It's, it's fabric, um, but it kind of works as it's washable. I can throw it in the washing machine and it kind of works as a liner as well. So I don't have to have a, like a separate fabric shower curtain and then a plastic liner as well. We can just have one thing, but I bought an extra long one and then we made a template of, again, kind of of the curve. And then I cut this to fit the curve and put new, like re-sewed the top with the curve in it and then put grommets in it. And then we put hooks all along the ceiling here. So when it's time to take a shower, we, um, this is all just kind of accordion folded back here and this is how it'll live most of the time. Um, but then when it's time to take a shower, we can just kind of undo all of these, pull them off this hook and then we just go through and just hook them all up. And there we go. So now we have a shower curtain that actually 
fits the curve of the shower. And we set the hooks just like an inch or two away from the edge of the ceiling. So it actually, it's kind of nice because when you're in there, it doesn't feel like the shower curtain is like right next to you. It kind of pushes out a little bit. It gives you a little bit of extra like arm room in there, which is really nice. Um, the other kind of cool thing that we did was because this is just a walkthrough bathroom and we don't have like a wall here so if someone is using the bathroom, um, you know, there's not a ton of privacy in here. I mean, that's okay for our family. It's not a huge deal. Um, obviously we have pocket doors on both sides so you can close it off. But if somebody needs to be going through here and you want a little extra privacy, what we did was in here, we added a couple of extra hooks so you could use this shower curtain like a little <laughs> privacy, Oh, I think, you know what? I gotta fix this. This has to come down. You can use this as an extra little like privacy um, for being in here on the toilet. And that just goes around like that. And now you have like a little curtained off toilet area. So if we had family visiting with us or something and we need a little extra privacy in here, it's great. And even though this is white, you really cannot see through it at all. Like if you're someone's in there, you cannot see them or you can't see out. So it actually provides a lot of privacy, um, which is great. And then, you know, when it's time for, to put the shower curtain away, we just kind of accordion pull this back on these first two hooks. And you know, it just takes a couple minutes. Obviously it's not at, or not even a couple minutes, 20 seconds maybe. It's not as convenient as having a rod you can just slide, but six people living in a 35 foot bus is not always gonna be convenient. So this is just one of those little tricks that we did to make this curved shower functional for us. So um, next thing is we added some towel hooks up here and I sewed on some little tabs onto our towels. These are Turkish towels, so they should dry really fast. They're nice and thin, but they're big wide towels. Um, and then I just sewed these little tabs on to make them easier to hang. Um, we can also, we figured like for the person in the shower who this is their towel and they can't really reach that far. Well, before their shower, they could always just grab their towel and hang it right here. And then it's easier to get it when they get out of the shower. They can grab it from there if they want. Um, we also added a little, just like a little command hook over here on the side of the medicine cabinet for a hand towel for the sink. It's hard to see in this very tiny bathroom. And then the last thing we did was we added um, this little kind of shelf for shampoo and body wash and all of that stuff. And it has hooks on it for hanging a scrubby or a razor or something and we didn't have to drill into our tile. These have these uh, like really, 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 really sticky stickers and then that screw, the, the shelf actually screws into the stickers but nothing actually screws into the tile. Now, disclaimer, we have no idea if this is actually gonna work because those stickers are supposed to go on like a flat surface, not something that's like bumpy like the penny tile. So we're not sure if like water will get back behind there and loosen those up and this will not work. So we'll let you know after we actually start using it, but we're gonna try it for now. Um, and so this is where we can stash all of our shower stuff. But now we are actually done. We, other than floors and stuff like that, but we are done with the shower. This is a functional bathroom and everything um, turned out better than we thought, which we're really excited. We. This is one of the reasons why we left this room to the last room was because we were just kind of nervous about the tiling and figuring out how to deal with this part of the shower and how we were gonna address the shower curtain, which seems like a simple thing now, but you know, we just didn't know and it just made us nervous. So we kept putting it off and putting it off and choosing to do other projects. But now that it's done, we're really happy with how it turned out. And even though the shower is, you know, relatively small, it's like two feet by three feet. It actually isn't that bad when you get in there. Like, it's just not that bad. There's room and with the extra little shelf, it's, you know, 
there's a little bench. Nice to have like a place to stick your foot up or to sit on it and stick your leg in if you need to shave or whatever you need to do. It's just, um, you know, we're just happy with how it turned out. So thanks for following along with this. I know it's been a really long process of like all the waterproofing and the tile, you know, the tiling and the ceiling and the walls and the wallpaper and it just, it's taken us a bit, but we are done and we are happy. And now we get to move on to the next project.